All right, guys. To Argentina now, where supporters of the right-wing outsider Javier Millet... It happened in an election between a corrupt establishment, generally reviled politician, and a lunatic anarcho-capitalist. The lunatic anarcho-capitalist has won. They have been celebrating his victory in the presidential election. Mr. Millet, known as El Loco, or the madman, pulled uh -huh, off a uh -huh. major upset. Provisional results show the self-styled anarcho-capitalist won with 55.7%. By a massive majority, too. A 12-point lead in favor of Millet. Incredible. ...of the vote compared to 44% for his rival. Economy Minister Sergio Massa of the governing Peronists, who rapidly conceded defeat. Javier Millet has promised a new door. I genuinely thought anarcho-capitalism was a joke ideology by political bros. It is. Anarcho-capitalism can't exist in real life. It is completely inapplicable. Anarcho-capitalists in practice are usually just fascists. The question is really, to what extent is he genuinely insane, and to what extent is he cleverly masquerading his fascist views behind a guise of anarcho-capitalist dreck. And in his case, there's a very high likelihood that he actually is just insane, which would probably make him less destructive than if he was, um, maliciously dishonest. ...for a country ravaged by debt and rocketing inflation, pledging to do away with the central bank and replace the peso with the US dollar. Donald Trump congratulated him on his victory, saying he will truly make Argentina great again. And Brazil's former president, Bolsonaro, said hope shines again in South America. Katie Watson reports. For Argentina, this was a political earthquake. Javier Millet... Argentina has a, has a, 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 a banger flag, I have to say. I like that, I like that, that baby blue with the, with the, like, sun emoji. The creepy sun emoji. This is very good. This is very, this is very powerful won by a wider than expected margin, and his victory sent a clear message. Argentinians wanted change. La situación de Argentina is... Bad Empanada is in shambles right now. Bad Empanada is going to like take to the jungle and wage like a, a Maoist people's war against the Millet regime, you know? He's, 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 going, he's going to be like firebombing, uh, you know, like post office. Situation in Argentina is critical. The changes our country needs are drastic. There is no room for gradualism. There is no room for half measures. Mr. Millet was a relative unknown until a few months ago, but his brash manner, including wielding a chainsaw at a campaign event, got him noticed. In a country where annual inflation is now over 140 percent. The reason why he was wielding that chainsaw is because it's a big part of his uh, campaign promise that he's going to cut government spending. He's basically said like he's going to cut every single government program. And two in five Argentinians now live in poverty. A drastic new approach to fixing economic problems was a clever move. I think this time Argentina needed a change, and that's why I bet on this new proposal. We are doing really bad as a country, and I hope Millet does not disappoint us. With this current government, we have gone from bad to worse. But the campaign was divisive, as his rival acknowledged when he conceded defeat. I called him convinced that the most important thing for us Argentinians tonight is to remember that working together, dialogue and respect for peace rather than this violence is the best path we should take. But it won't be easy for Malay. On Sunday, it was clear many are disappointed with politicians and their empty promises of change. Yeah, so it, it should be understood that this is really like a lesser of two evils in the minds of many Argentinian voters. It's not so much people being super excited for Millet. His opposition, Sergio Massa, from, from my understanding, is basically just like disappointment congealed at a politician. Like just a, a, a you know... Um, a privileged, powerful, sits in the chair, promises, doesn't do shit, blah -de blah You know, like, just... Peep, peep, it's a desperation vote. People are lunging out and looking for anything. It's, it's essentially like a more pronounced version of the 2016 election, where a lot of what happened was really down to people not caring about Hillary, more so than... Like, Trump did not get a, an astonishing number of votes in 2016. Hillary just got fewer votes than anyone expected because nobody f cared, you know? But I, 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 I'm not exactly an expert on this guy. I looked over his Wikipedia page, and he just, like, 
the impression that I get from looking over what he has done is that every time he gets elected, people basically shrug and go, eh, yeah, I guess this guy. And then he promises stuff, and then some stuff happens, and he's very corrupt, and not much gets done, and not much gets better, and that's just how it is. I'm sure there's a lot more complexity to it, but I think that disappointment and bitterness is what explains this. Like, this is essentially the result of a protest vote. So? I'm a bit sad about the whole situation. I don't know how this will help us move the country forward. At least we are voting and exercising democracy, but I'm not happy with either candidate. Yeah, 140% inflation. Like, holy shit, wait, hold on, let me see the chart. Uh, Argentina inflation chart. Jesus Christ. The top line here, this is 120%. That's what this line is. Um... Inflation rate by month, Argentina 2023. You know how groceries have gone up like 50% in price? Imagine them tripling in price in the span of one year. Yeah, it's not good. Now, I'm not going to pretend I understand the exact, uh, you know, reasons why Argentina is experiencing a very high inflation rate. I would like to know. I'll get into it soon. Um, but yeah, again, stuff like this tends to lead people to, uh, to protest vote. Mr. Malay has also pledged to loosen gun laws and ban abortion. And he and his vice president... Again, there, uh, there we go. Anarcho-capitalism at its finest. Freedom, freedom, freedom. No government intervention. Have guns, have guns. Ban abortion. Yeah. Like I said, he's not actually anarcho-capitalist. He's just, uh, uh, you know, a, a hardcore... Um, he's a fascist with a libertarian bent. President ...have repeatedly been accused of lacking respect for democracy and calling into question the official number of victims during the country's dictatorship. All told, Malay's victory has been a shock for Argentina's traditional... Oh yeah, his supporters were also screaming fraud when they were counting the votes for the election the other day, even before they had finished. Like, he did the, he did the Trump thing, where he said, like, three million illegals voted, and then he ended up winning anyway, but then he insisted still that three million illegals voted. You know, he basically did that. ...political scene. Javi Malay said he'd deliver change for Argentina, but few understand what that will look like. One thing's clear... It'll be unlike anything that's come before. Katie Watson, BBC News. Well, earlier I spoke to Mimi Swaby about Millet's victory. Defying pollsters who predicted a really close result, Javier Millet has been the runaway victor with nearly 56% of the votes against his rival. He so defended Thatcher. And if you know the history between the UK and Argentina over the Falklands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weirdly, he both, he, he has made the claim that Argentina has sovereignty over the Falklands, but has also defended Thatcher and called her like one of the most influential or important people or whatever in the um, in modern history. Uh, this is most explainable by the fact that he is a fascist, where he will admire authoritarian tendencies and other authoritarians, but he also has like a strong nationalist bent. Like, you know, again, again, anarcho-capitalism is not a real ideology. There are just some fascists who uh, emphasize business freedoms as like the through line to their, um, you know, to, to, their, uh, to their political ends. Sergio Massa. And this has really upheaved a political status quo, which has long been dominated for decades now in Argentina by two main parties. Now, when Javier Millet first announced his entry into politics back in 2020, very few people thought he was serious. He just suggested he would blow up the system. Yet three years later, this far right libertarian radical figure. A he also boinked his sister, allegedly. He looks like his dad boinked his sister far-right economist and former TV pundit, is now the next president of Argentina and will soon hold the keys to Casa Rosada on the 10th of December. This has been an election race with surprises, twists and turns. But this outside radical figure with a campaign full of influences on social media, it's his combative and aggressive at times approach, which has been seen as a bit of a lightning rod by ditching the Argentine peso, dollarizing the economy and uh. eliminating the central bank. He has some interesting proposals of... All right, right off the bat, what's the opening proposal? What if we made our entire economy completely reliant on the US dollar, uh, hedged all of our stability to the United States? 
addressing the government size, which he says is this omnipresent kind of state which has only caused people suffering throughout Argentina. Can he even he do that? He wants to get rid of sure. the Ministry of Culture, Sport, and very controversially of women, and merge the health and... I mean, personally, I think it would be better for the long term in their country to stabilize their economy. Keep in mind, they can dollarize, but they can't print U.S. dollars which means that if their economy runs on U.S. dollars, they have to get all of their money, all of their dollars, from the United States. Only the U.S. government can print dollars. That's the point of the U.S. dollar, which means that not only will the stability of their economy hinge at our stability, which, to be fair, that's the case for the entire world because the U.S. dollar is the international uh, currency of business, but at the same time, it means that it would be basically impossible in the future for any kind of radical economic or currency reform to be done by the Argentinians because, again, only the United States can print their currency. They have to take all of it from the U.S. They essentially have to buy their ability to use their economy from us. Sounds great for the USA? Yes, it's great for us. Education departments. Aside from economic policy, though, he's some very controversial and divisive social policies he's proposed. He wants to ban or criminalize abortion, which was only legalized in 2020. But then he also wants to legalize the free trade of human organs, as well as... That is true. He's also said that in some cases he could understand the um, sale of human children gun laws. So he has some very interesting and polarizing uh, propositions, but it's in the next three weeks. Very, in that's, that's some great like journalist speak right there. Very interesting, very polarizing positions, you know. People have strong opinions on his positions. Before he takes office that we'll hopefully see some details for these pretty vague plans at the moment. So how he's going to do that, is he going to uh, dollarize the economy gradually or in one hit, which would have a huge impact on the markets, or is it going to be a last minute thing when he gets into office? Nice. Yes, the uh, Millet's vice president, uh, Victoria Villarul, I believe it's pronounced, but I'm probably wrong. Uh, seems to also be a conservative. Most of her Wikipedia page is dedicated to her uh, sort of denying the atrocities of past right-wing dictatorships and claiming that politicians are too afraid to speak out about the crimes of left-wing terrorists who operated during the uh, era of that regime in, like, the 70s. So, Vero v Via Rule's 2014 book about focusing on Argentine conflicts presented methodological errors. She included 84 nomen nisio victims, so that's no name, victims dated before the foundation of the group she denounces as terrorists, victims of other groups like the Argentine Anti-Communist Alliance, and did not differentiate between civilian and military casualties. According to Villarreal, the majority of their crimes had in fact been committed during the three years of democracy immediately prior to the 1976 military coup. So I guess, I guess she just has like some weird historically rooted desire to lie about the crimes of the of of the military junta so that's that's her bit i guess that that's her shit can you elaborate on this guy's child trafficking policy sure as soon as he does also it's not trafficking if they're just selling them it's legal at that point it's just child trade um political positions of la libertad avanza which is the, uh, the party that has won here. Reduction in the size and scope of the Argentine state, arguing its current scale and regulatory framework are detrimental to economic efficiency and individual prosperity. La Libertad Evanza proposes a streamlined federal government structure which would include the retention or creation of the following ministries, reducing their total number to eight from the current 19. So in a weird way, this is kind of like the Argentine... Um, Project 2025 with the destruction of the administrative state, reducing the number of departments from 19 to 8. Reducing government bureaucracy and expenditures. Market-oriented approach. Aiming to reduce public spending by 15% of GDP. Lowering taxes with the goal of eliminating 90% of the existing ones. Modernizing labor laws to encourage job creation, taking inspiration from models like that of Uokra. This is not an English article. 
the Construction Workers Union of the Argentine Republic. Okay, that's its own rabbit hole. Advancing towards a unilateral trade policy modeled after Chile with the goal of enhancing international competitiveness for Argentine companies, eliminating the central bank, reforming the energy sector by recalibrating subsidies and tariffs, and inviting private sector participation. It should be noted that the history of fascism in Latin America is almost entirely oriented around how business-friendly can we make ourselves to the West. Like, again, look at Pinochet. Like, that, that is almost always how this goes down, because Latin America was basically America's, like, uh, dumping ground during the Cold War. Look at the last proposed ministry. The Ministry of Human Capital. I wonder what that would imply. Judicial reforms. Okay, a bunch of specific judicial reforms. Yeah, human capital. Here we go. Ministry of Human Capital. La Libertad Avanza proposes a comprehensive approach to addressing issues related to health, social development, labor, and education by consolidating them into a single Ministry of Human Capital. Okay, sorry guys, it's not about child um, sale. It's not about the child trade market. It advocates for maintaining social assistance until the country can transition to a more prosperous economic model based on freedom. Also champions the long-term transition to private systems for healthcare and education. Hmm. The party identifies childhood poverty and lack of access to basic amenities as significant issues in Argentina, attributing these to long-standing policy failures. Hmm. Current education system is centralized and bureaucratic, fails to meet the needs of citizens. Current public health care system is ineffective. La Libertad de Vanza asserts that Argentina's declining security situation is primarily due to an abolitionist culture that views criminals as victims and the large size of the state, which has led to lack of control over its essential functions. The party emphasizes the role of security forces in the state is to repress criminal activities to protect citizens' life, liberty, and property. Hmm, that's interesting. Why would a, a, an ostensibly anarcho-capitalist uh, uh, um, administration emphasize a sort of law and order attitude towards criminality. Wouldn't they be the very first people to advocate for a reduction in terms of the police and military state? Uh, nope. Every single time. Opposed to state intervention, except for the main thing the state can do to intervene, which is to arrest you or kill you. Yeah. In line with this, they propose a new security doctrine grounded in the principle of, quote, you reap what you sow. Wow. Defense policy, blah, blah, foreign relations, a new doctrine in foreign relations focused on two principles, defending liberal democracies globally, huh, and promoting free trade between nations. The party declares Argentina will no longer be an ally to dictatorships and seeks to reestablish its position among democratic and free countries. We'll see how that goes down. Um, he has claimed that he wants to establish strong economic ties with the United States, which he would have to if he wants to dollarize their economy. Um, but, you know. Hmm. All right. So here's my impression, okay? And I'm just kind of stabbing in the dark. But here's my impression, okay? I think that Millet is a man out of time. I think that he's 50 years too late to being America's favorite dictator in Latin America. I think that in his mind, it's like 1972, and through privatization, a strong like backing with the United States in opposition to global dictatorship and um, like making yourself amenable to Western business interests in the form of dollarizing and privatizing the economy, you can build like strong regional, um, you, you know, uh, 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 control and stabilize your economy. I think the problem here ultimately is that um, he's actually kind of sincere. See, none of these policies, when framed together, actually make very much sense in the context of the modern world. This would make sense 50 years ago. 
The problem is right now, if he wanted to do all of this and for it to work, he would not be aligning himself purely with the United States. He would be going for like a broad sort of come one, come all, like open to all business, uh, you know, uh, approach. He wouldn't be cutting himself off to, to China or whatever else. Um, it doesn't make any sense to do that. It seems like he wants to pal up to the United States, but we live in a globalized economy these days. Argentina has the ability to trade with anyone and everyone if they want to and if they develop for it. It doesn't make sense. And what's more, I do think that he has fascist tendencies, but a lot of what's written out here is not fascist. The rhetoric isn't fascist. The proposed policies aren't fascist. He, it, I think he, I think, I think he might have drank his own, uh, you know, um, you know, Kool Aid a little bit here. I feel and piss. Yeah, sure. Like I, I think that he's the kind of fascist that would make sense fifty years ago. But today, a lot of the things that would have made you a fascist then don't work now. Like, for example, the reason Pinochet was able to get away with what Pinochet got away with was in large part because the United States was completely fine with uh, death squads and fascist governments in Latin America back when Pinochet was around. Nowadays, that's not really how we conduct our business. Not to say we're like too good for it. But it's just not how we tend to do things these days, you know? We defended um, Lula um, de Silva's government in, in Brazil. Biden did. So, like, what is he doing, you know? There's, there's a weird lack of, like, hyper-nationalist, ethnic, or religious galvanizing in the official policies proposed. I know that he personally is quote-unquote anti-woke, but if he's anti-woke, why would he also say that he wants to, like, align himself with the United States politically uh, and economically to the detriment of like global dictatorships. And furthermore, like where is the um, where is the hyper nationalist pseudo isolationism? Fascist governments almost always do this thing where they're like, we need to consolidate. We need to like focus on ourselves. We need to close our borders. We need to work on building our own industry. We need to do this. We need to do that. Because generally speaking, fascist governments kind of rely on the polarization of the us and the them. You know, they need to have an in-group and an out-group. But he's not doing that. He wants to dollarize the economy and open them up to trade. Again, this is the kind of fascism that I would expect to see like 50 years ago. Like, you know, it, it's, it's weird. Now, obviously, like, there will always be a difference between rhetoric and what he actually ends up doing, you know? Like, like it, it, I'm not saying that he's being perfectly honest in all of that. I feel like he is a man out of time. I feel like his model for building Argentina and sort of, uh, re, you know, engaging in far-right, uh, you know, like, justification for his political policies, I think it's, out, I, I think it's outdated. I don't think this is going to work. There's basically two ways this can go. Either this completely crashes and burns, which is a very real possibility, or things end up going weirdly okay. Like basically Argentina just has a weird period of like austerity politics where public spending is cut and there's an economic reform that doesn't work that well, but also doesn't have that much of an outcome. See, one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that this game, this guy may have won the presidency, but he did not win the um the legislature uh if as as i understand it hold on yeah he only has 35 seats in the chamber of deputies and only 7 in the senate see he doesn't even he doesn't even have close to a majority so he won the presidency because people were so disappointed in his opposition but in terms of the legislature, like he's going to have to bargain with them. And it makes me wonder, is it possible that a lot of the crazier stuff that he wants to do is just going to get shot down by the legislature? And as a consequence, the only thing he ends up doing is imposing a kind of moderate period of austerity where there's this really weird dissonance between him going on TV and saying some absolutely crazy shit and then nothing happens and three months later there's some like weird spending reform bill that maybe makes things a little bit worse but doesn't like have a huge outcome i wonder he will have to be very worried in terms of getting impeached because congress will impeach him if he does stupid shit yeah 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 
I, mm, I don't know. It really does feel like it's a coin flip between this guy doing, like, basically nothing, like, mildly worsening things, and him nuking the entire country, basically. I don't know. It, it's very odd. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? Like, the, I, I'm, I'm doing a very bad job explaining it right now, I feel. Um, but does everyone understand what I'm saying when I say that he's like a fascist out of time? If you go and look up, like, Pinochet or whatever, or like, or like any of the era of Latin American far-right dictators who America put there to, like, stop the spread of communism or whatever else, like, if you look at the history of those leaders, there was a very specific doctrine that they had with regards to their approach to fascism because their fascism was completely dependent on them sucking up to america you know but that's not how it works anymore fascist governments globally these days don't tend to like america because america is no longer committed to propping up fascist regimes in order to oppose the spread of like uh communism you know not to say again that we're above doing that it's just not the main thing we're focused on right now so Fascist regimes tend to oppose America because we're generally considered to be an international beacon of democracy and progressivism, which relative to a lot of countries, we are for sure. Um, so why suck up to us? Maybe he maybe he really is just going to do like the neo neoliberal thing. Maybe he really is just going to be like Reagan or Thatcher for Argentina, you know, no death squads, no crazy nuking the economy or whatever just a period of austerity and and consolidation that isn't good but isn't as destructive as it could have been a couple of fun facts la libertad's avanza's logo is literally based off the nazi eagle also Millet's instagram page follows exactly 1488 accounts oh oh i'm not denying that he personally is like a, a racist or a fascist or whatever else okay he's literally like a far right and cap white boy in argentina like you know this is it, it yeah nice meme uh, I'm I'm not denying this in any way, shape, or form, okay? I'm only talking about, like, the way he's presenting his political slant. And yes, we, we've all seen Captain Ancap, hero of the free market. This rules, okay? This, this to me, is even better than, like, before Fetterman milkshake ducked. Uh, Fetterman wearing shorts and a hoodie everywhere. This is good, okay? I want, I want more politicians to do this. The reason you see a lack of ethnic or religious galvanizing is because his galvanizing relies on focusing against the corrupt and ineffective political ruling class. He doesn't need to do that much racism. He does have some racist-ish policies, though, like denying foreigners free healthcare and education, which is a big point here in Argentina. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. As long as he's, um, as long as he's primarily aligned against corruption rather than degeneracy or foreign influence, he can never reach fascism level two. Focusing on corruption is a pretty um, a common like opener for a lot of fascist regimes, but it's usually only a through line to attribute that corruption to a specific ethnic or religious group. For example, uh, the Nazis did this, where they would complain about corruption in the Weimar government and and like anti-nationalism in the Weimar government, that kind of stuff. But they only really did that because it allowed them to get to point number two, which was the reason they're doing that is because blah blah Jews, right? Um, so it was it was done for the sake of something else. Whereas in his case, unless he starts doing the thing where he's like, yeah, my opponent's uh, corruption is actually because he's from this ethnic group or whatever, you know, we should like be suspicious of those guys. It, it It's not really like, I feel like I'm doing a bad job explaining. I'm sleep deprived like a mother right now. Still, this is important to understand, I feel. He and his party will do what you're describing. The thing is, they will not base that hatred and repression on ethnicity or religion slash nationality, but ideology. Um, if that's the case, then it can't get that bad. It can get very bad, but it could get potentially so much worse. This guy has the potential to do a lot of damage, but as long as his... Um, look, it's all about material conditions, okay? It's all about material conditions. The forces that he galvanizes people over, the, the systems that he antagonizes people over, as long as he's ideologically committed to the kind of pro-business privatization that would have dictated the economic policy of some 1970s era Latin American right-wing government, he can never mobilize the kind of militant, uh, fascist, anti-communist, uh, you know, um, behavior that his predecessors did because we no longer exist in that era 
to put it another way, Pinochet could throw communists out of helicopters while relying on American support. This guy is so reliant on American support that he wants to dollarize the economy. Do you think the Biden administration would be happy to get along with him if he was like throwing political dissidents out of helicopters? It's possible that he's praying for a Trump victory. In fact, he probably is because if Trump won, it's possible he could get away with a lot more and simultaneously be fascist and also uh, dollarize their economy and rely on like American foreign investment. That is possible. However, I still think that even a Trump regime would be less willing to go along with his shenanigans than America used to be with Pinochet. And the reason for that is because Trump is at least nominally isolationist. See, America backed a lot of fascist regimes during the Cold War, but America itself was not fascist. We were just willing to, you know, be buddies with like every fascist government in the world if it meant fighting communism. So as a consequence of that, we had a very internationalist perspective when it came to fighting communism. Whereas nowadays, Trump's government is like, or not Trump's government, Trump's uh, uh, party, you know, Trump's like uh, the power base constantly jerks itself off about how, uh, you know, it's America first, it's detached from world government affairs. Why is this our business? How is this our business? They're not sincerely isolationist, but it just doesn't, it doesn't represent the same kind of support. Um, I think you're forgetting about Israel. I think that Israel is a very specific exception. We're using Israel as a wedge against Iran. No such situation exists in Latin America. Um, you know. What you're not getting is that it's not necessarily about sucking up to America. It's about destroying everything related to the Argentine state. Yeah, but that's kind of weird for a fascist to do. Fascists usually do the opposite. They, they might take foreign money, but they usually rely on like this overemphasization, this, this, this dialectic between modernism and like historical traditionalism to, to build some kind of like monstrous Frankenstein state uh, where you have like a, a technocratic, uh, you know, surveillance state, but you also have like roadside restaurants where, you know, like uh, characters from regional fairy tales uh, are painted on the walls while you get served coffee or something. Like it's there's there's a contradiction present here, but this isn't contradictory. This is just like pro business policy. I, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If if people watching this right now can take anything from my rambling, the thing that you need to take from it is that this is a very odd election, and I think that um, Millet's proposed policies are extremely internally contradictory in a way that is going to be interesting to watch. So we'll see. We'll see. But you always say Trump is a real danger to democracy. What do you think could happen with Trump being highly anti-democratic in regards to what other countries start to accept? Oh yeah, for sure. If, if Trump wins, that is a win for authoritarianism the world around. What I'm saying is that Trump's mode of authoritarianism is not the kind that is super invested in promoting both business interests in and regional support of other dictatorships or pseudo dictatorships like what Millet represents in Argentina, you know, people with authoritarian tendencies. It's not the same kind of deal. You know, fascists tend to LARP about isolationism, but we weren't fascist during the Cold War. We just allied with fascism. A big difference, right? Um, but it, well, it is different because we had an internationalist approach. Fascists can't do the internationalism bit. At least they can't do it without a bunch of jumping through hoops. Like Russia, for example, hardcore leans in on like the ultra nationalist stuff and the the you know the the like Duganesque like isolationist tendency of forming like the greater Russia the the like pan Eurasian Russia but at the same time the Kremlin more in like a you know sort of international uh intrigues you know opsec kind of way uh funds right-wing governments the world around doesn't Trump love Orban I'm sure that's different though Trump does love Orban but the question is if Orban wanted to dollarize, replace his entire economy with like American backed dollars, uh, well, a dollar is America backed by definition, uh, and then like move forward as a kind of like purportedly free market extension of American business interests, would Trump care that much? And my honest answer to that is I don't think he would. I think America, I sorry, I think that Trump likes Orban because Orban is a fascist who has sort of quietly uh, but meaningfully wrested democracy away from the Hungarian people. But I don't think that Trump cares about Orban in a like, 
I will form a, an undying economic bond with you kind of way. I, I, I think it's just game recognized game, not the same relationship we had with Chile during, during, during Pinochet. That wasn't game recognized game. That was, we will like bond ourselves economically and politically to Pinochet to the extent that it allows him to prevent the spread of communism vis-a-vis -vis helicopter death squads or whatever. Um, it's just, it's different. It's different. It's, it's weird. Uh, I don't know. I guess after reading all of this, my impression is that I am less afraid of this guy's leadership than I was initially. I don't think he's good. I think he's insane. I think that he is internally fascist, but I think the mode by which he projects his fascism, I think the, the kind of fascism that he puts forward is not the kind that is most dangerous in this situation. Between his apparent internal ideological inconsistencies and the fact that the legislature is not on his side, I don't think that his presidency is going to be as destructive um, as uh, some people fear it will be. I think that a lot of his worst impulses will be either curtailed by the legislature or they won't pop up at all because they, con they conflict with his desire to be like America's butt buddy. Vosh, the Saudis and Turkey, uh, Turkish have been sending money to Trump in his hotels to bribe him into foreign policy support so Argentina could do the same if Trump wins. No, no, you're, you're not understanding what I'm saying, okay? When other countries bribe Trump into favorably thinking of them, it is still not like the relationship that we had with Latin American dictatorships. I'm not talking about whether or not Trump would like Millet. What I'm talking about is, would a Trump-run United States... Which, which is sort of based primarily on at least the rhetoric of isolationism, also engage with this ostensible pro-free market, pro-internationalist, pro-foreign investment, pro-democracy, Milan, Argentinian government? Like, isn't there a contradiction there? That's not how Hungary conducts itself. This style of austerity politics of, of, of far-right galvanization. It's just out of time. It's out of date. We'll see what happens. I feel like I've done a very poor... I, I feel like I've done a poor job explaining this. I don't know how... Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm leaving it as is. I'm leaving it as is. People are going to, like, misinterpret what I've said. People are going to people are gonna say shit like, um, oh, wow, you're saying this guy's not a threat. Or people are going to say, like, um, you know, oh, wow, you really think that, like, America wouldn't back a right-wing leader or something? Like, they're not going to listen to what I said, but I, yeah, I don't know. Okay, yeah. I feel, I feel like I'm kind of like learning on the fly here. If I had a bit more time, I think I could sort of distill this down to a more concise take. You're not doing awful, but you need to take this a little more seriously than out. Well, that's not very helpful. I am taking it seriously. It's complicated. Look, on the plus side, one thing this probably will be is very funny because this guy is a lunatic and is definitely not ready for the responsibilities of being a leader, which means that he's going to... I, I feel like we're going to see a bunch of really goofy goober behavior is what I'm looking forward to personally. I want to see Vosh try, have a stroke trying to understand Peronism. Justicialism, a labor and left-wing leaning Argentine political movement based on that. What is the relevance of this? Yes, please. Whoa, 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 hold on. No, no, this is tough enough, okay? The people he's running against. Peronism is the core of our politics. Can I, can I, can I engage with one complicated political subject at a time? This seems like genuinely like quite complicated, okay? Let me let let's 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 do this a little bit in the future, okay? It's mandatory to understand Argentinian politics. I don't claim to understand Argentinian politics. I don't. I'm only trying to under I'm I'm, I'm trying to figure out, I guess, the threat level of Malay's government. And I have come across after all of this with a fairly positive and optimistic impression for a variety of reasons. Shouldn't a popular political influencer like Vosh already know and understand stuff like Peronism? Damn, dude. Man, in order to be a political streamer, you need like a stronger pre-existing knowledge base than any profession in the world, dude. Holy shit. There's always someone, you know? Oh my God. Listen, all right? I'm an American. The fact that I even know how to spell Argentina when I type it into Google to look up wiki articles and how your government works is a, is a, 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 a gracious uh, a gift to you, all right? We'll do more research into it in the future. One more summary. One more summary. You hear that? One final summary. Millet was elected primarily not because people are super jazzed about him, but rather because people are disappointed in the corruption and ineptitude of his primary opposition. One. Two. Millet may have won the presidency, but uh, the legislature is still very much controlled by the opposition. He doesn't even have close to a majority in the legislature. 
as a consequence of that, he not only has to fear impeachment, he also has to fear, you know, not nothing actually getting through the legislature, uh, which is a pretty big deal if you're a president. Okay, that's two. Three, Millet is authentically a lunatic, which means that he is unpredictable and generally unable to assess the situation at hand. Uh, he, he does not seem to be playing a lunatic as a bit. Uh, he genuinely seems to be kind of crazy. So that's something. Four, the style of right-wing governance that he seems to want to pursue, both in rhetoric and in the policies that he seems jazzed about, are very, very, very ideologically libertarian. The problem with that is that libertarianism is fake. It's not real. It's a fake ideology. It can't actually happen. At most, what he could put forward is heavy privatization, uh, austerity, and the deconstruction of the administrative state, which is, you know, not nothing, but a lot of the more radical, ideologically motivated anarcho-capitalist propositions he has don't seem to be, for one, they're not likely to pass through the legislature, but at the same time, like, I don't even know if they could be implemented. Like, we're going to run up. It's like the, 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 the contradiction between, like, an impossible ideology and reality here. You know what I mean? It's difficult enough for even mildly radical politicians to get some of their stuff through. So the idea of him getting the more radical stuff through just doesn't seem likely. Okay? Number five. Very important to understand. Millet might absolutely himself be right-wing, but the style of right-wing that he is is kind of weird and out of date. He seems to favor international investment, allying with international democracies, and he wants to dollarize the economy, making his entire economy completely tied to the U.S. dollar, which means that he would be ceding a lot of Argentina's uh, economic um, autonomy to the United States, which is um, inter an interesting decision motivated primarily by a very high rate of inflation, you know. I don't think it's a good idea in the long term, but maybe it could sort of cut off, uh, you know, the, the inflation in the short term. We're certainly not experiencing as much inflation as they are right now. So, you know, I, I, I don't agree with the decision. But what's interesting is that fascism, certainly today, more than ever before, it relies very, very heavily on things like isolationism, hypernationalism. It relies on like the galvanization on certain ethnic, religious, or or you know like national lines, and he doesn't seem to be pushing those things. They're present. His movement isn't devoid of racism. There are certainly racists in his coalition. He himself is almost certainly a racist. But as long as his presidency and his rhetoric are aligned mostly towards uh, economic privatization and um, anti-corruption. He can't really mobilize the kind of fervor that usually leads fascist movements to get really, really, really out of control. Does that make any sense? The most radical uh, far-right governments almost always galvanize over ethnicity or religion uh, or, or national status. And I don't think that the way he's projecting himself indicates those are what he's interested in doing. I think that this is mostly like an economic and corruption thing. Now, historically... A lot of bad things have been done in line with the economic interests of far-right governments, uh, you, you know, in Latin America, Pinochet, death squads, whatever else. However, I don't think that those tendencies are as likely when he is trying to suck up to America, both for foreign investment and like the dollarization of the economy. Even if Trump wins... The style of far-right governance he's proposing just doesn't seem to work well with the worst tendencies of what we see today in modern fascist governments. So personally, I think that his presidency is going to be a mess where he's not going to accomplish very much. I think it's going to be kind of funny. Like he's going to do funny things. Like it's it's going to be it's going to be goofy. You know, there's going to be some goofy goober behavior, which which I respect. Um a little bit, you know, I, I, I like a little goofster behavior. I hope he wears that anarcho-capitalist like ANCAP man suit uh, to some of his presidential addresses. Um, it's possible that his rhetoric shifts in the future and he kind of backs off the economic stuff and starts consolidating and nationalizing and, and, and galvanizing along ethnic lines. And if he does that, things could change. But again, uh, I don't know if that's how things are going to go. I don't think that he has a broad enough base of support under all cases, and I don't think the fervor is there, you know. Um, 
rhetoric might change, but the people who supported him, mostly because they were disappointed with the opposition, are probably not going to shift from like, oh, we want an end to the corruption to, oh, we want the ousting of this particular ethnic group without some kind of really, really powerful motivator. And is that present here? Not without some kind of shift or, or, or like change in rhetoric. I just don't think so. So I don't think he's going to be able to do that much. I do think he's probably going to fuck up the economy some more, but you know, it's Argentina. Your economy was already fucked, okay? It's like a very, very well-used flashlight, all right? It's, it look, okay? It needed cleaning anyway. Uh, yeah, so to my Argentinian followers who have been desperately emailing me in tears, asking me for hope, it's not great. However, uh, I don't think it's going to be as bad as a lot of you seem to think it's going to be, and I think that it could also potentially be kind of funny. It's also possible that his failures end up sort of mobilizing and strengthening the left in your country, which if that ends up being the case would be pretty great, I think, because uh, I think left-leaning things are good. So that might be nice, you know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see.